So, Akeem, thanks for making the time to meet with me, man. Man, thank you for having me. No, no, my pleasure. So just to give a little background, we decided at the Minnesota Timberwolves and Lynx that we really want to highlight and profile uh, black leaders in our community, in every aspect of the community, that's really doing the work, that's really helping to push us forward collectively as a community, like all of us as a collective community here in the uh, Twin Cities area. And look, man, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you. you. You are one of those people that's making it happen, man. We want to celebrate you. We want to lift you up. And so I know who you are, yeah. but I want to learn a little more about you. Yeah. So let's start off by just allowing you to introduce yourself. Allow me to. No, I'm just <laughs> like, let's start off by allowing you to introduce yourself, man. And like, yeah. tell the people who you are, man. OK, well, I'm uh, Akeem Akway, you know, 31 year old master barber. Um, business owner for six years now. Nice. Um, I don't know. You just ask me whatever you uh, want to know. Well, so when you think about Black History Month, right? Because yeah. we, we want to highlight people during this month and beyond. Like we've we've had conversations about this. This is not just going to be limited to mm -hmm. Black History Month, but yeah. we do want to allow people to see, you know. The, the, the black leaders in our community yeah. that are doing phenomenal things. Yeah. So when you think about Black History Month, what's, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Hmm. Man, just, just being grateful for guys like MLK, you know, making yeah. it possible for guys like me to be able to be uh, able to open a barbershop in a big corporation like this outlet mall, you know? Right, right, I right. feel like, you know, without MLK and those guys um, paving the way and fighting. I wouldn't be here to be able to provide for my homeboys to uh, be able to work, you know, in an establishment like this all, the, uh, all together having fun, you know? Right, right. So that's really what I think of uh, black history, you know, just paving the way for the, the future. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah, paving the way for those that come behind you. And so you've mm -hmm. identified and recognized people like MLK and others yep. that have done that for you. Mm -hmm. Do you realize or even think about that you are now doing that for others? You are the one that's paving the way for future generations that young boys and girls that may come into this shop or may read articles about you that you've, there, there's several articles about you, look at the stuff that you post on social and look at you as like, wow, like I could be that. I could be that entrepreneur. I could be that leader. I could be like the celebrity barber flying around on the G5, G6. <laughs> they got G7s yet? I don't know. No, I don't no, know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, they, yeah. you, you are setting an example for others. Do you ever realize that? You ever stop to recognize yeah. that? Yeah. Um, the other day I was at the game. I was sitting courtside and then, you know, when you walk uh, through the tunnel, one I mean, I'll, 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 I'll never get to sit court side, so oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know what that's going to <laughs> I'm going to have to invite you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was walking out the tunnel, and then one kid uh, on the railing came came and uh, screamed my name. Yo, Akwe. I'm like, what's up? He's like, can I get a picture with you? And it was so dope. I'm like, I, like, I didn't know I had that type of reach or influence to, like, because he was probably about, like, 13, 14, right. you know, a little kid asking me for a picture. I'm like, I'm not even the ball player, you know, but right, right. that just shows that uh, they're paying attention and see what I've done for the community. So some, some nights I'll just sit back and, or, you know, a lot of my friends, they'll remind me, you know, that or they're really grateful for what I've done uh, for them. Right. So sometimes I'll sit back in bed and, you know, think about all those, but I know I'm not done yet. You know, Man, that's what's up. So I feel like I have way more to to do. Right. So, right. Yeah. Was that ever part of your and thank you for what you do in all seriousness, man. Mm -hmm. And you, you deserve those flowers. Right. You, you, you put in the work. You yeah. deserve those flowers. Yeah. And did you ever think that this is what it would be like for you? You know, was this your vision? Was this your dream? You, you know, the dream was uh, when I was in high school, you know, everybody wanted to go to the NBA. Right, right, right. My brother told me, he was like, man, you're 5'10", weigh 130. <laughs> <laughs> he crushed your dreams. Yeah. He crushed your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, man, you don't even start on your own varsity team. You ain't going to no NBA. So, but 
I was cutting my uh, teammates in the locker room, you know, my varsity team, and that, th so I was able to live my dream through, like, now, you know, being right. able to cut the players, you know, because, like, two years ago, we put a barbershop at the facility, actually. Yeah, right. So it yeah. was kind of dope to, where I was cutting my homeboys in the locker room at high school, and now I'm cutting them at the practice facility, you know. Of an NBA team. Yeah, of an right. NBA team. So I, that's one thing I would tell kids, like, you can always live your dream, like, minus, like, the physical attribute and stuff like that. I wasn't able to get to the NBA, but I'm still able to, you know, service the NBA guys and be around the, the environment that we used to uh, want to be when we was kids, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, man. And I love that. Like you, you referenced Dr. King earlier, mm -hmm. and now you're talking about realizing your dream, mm -hmm. right? And you're being that example for other young people to yeah. keep their dreams alive and pursue their dreams. Yeah. And, and recognizing that, okay, you may have to change the approach, yeah. but don't give up on the dream. Exactly. Right? Because you, you still realize your dream, man. Yeah. That's, that's so dope. Yeah. So as we think about you know, Black History Month and what that may mean to so many other people. We recognize that when Black History Month was first started, you know, uh, back in 1926 when it was Black History Week. Oh, that's when it was started? Back in 1926, oh, yeah. Man. It was started off as Black History Week. Oh. Yeah, yeah. by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who was a black historian. Mm. And so he realized that as he went through academia in the United States as a historian, mm. right? Yeah. He recognized that, wow, like, people that look like me not in these history books, yeah. right? And I'm studying, like, I yeah. know what the history is. Yeah. And he, so he figured, okay, either they just don't know the yeah. contributions yeah. of blacks in America that they've made, yeah. or they're doing it intentionally. They mm. trying to keep us out of the history books. Mm. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lean that it's, it's the former. Maybe that's, they just don't know. Mm. So I'm gonna create a platform to educate them mm. on the contributions of other people that look like me, that look like him, that look mm. like you and I, mm. right? So he started it with the hopes that eventually there wouldn't even be a need for that platform, yeah. that it would just be a part of how we write history. Yeah. And now here we are, I wasn't a math major, 1926, carry on. Well, anyway, a lot of years later, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we still have a need for Black History Month to yeah. really highlight and profile and acknowledge and recognize hmm. pe people like you. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on it? You think we'll ever get to the point where we don't have to call out a special time of the year for America to say, hey, look at the contributions that the Akeem Akways of the world are making. Let's recognize this brother. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we will get there one day, but it's up to us to, you know, push the agenda, you know? Right. So like, you guys coming through today and interviewing me, that's, you know, making it more mm. of a everyday, uh, like recognizing uh, the black, black people that's uh, done a great job. So I think we'll get to a point like that one day. Um, just takes one another, you know, to reach out and highlight, you know, what we've done. Got you, got you. Yeah. You know, for, for me, the barbershop, right, it, it, it serves as, it's very nostalgic for me. Like, just growing up as a black man, yeah. growing up in the barbershop, yeah. remember always going to the barbershop as a, as a kid, man, and just enjoying the experience. And even as I got older, yeah. man, I remember going to the barbershop I hang out and kick it in the barbershop some days, man. Yeah. I might not even get a haircut. Yeah. Right? And then I just be, I go there to get a haircut, yeah. but you end up kicking it, and then you realize, oh man, I like, I gotta bounce. I gotta <laughs> yeah, be out. Yeah. But it's something about the atmosphere and the mm -hmm. environment of the barbershop that's so attractive yeah. to black males. It's almost like our place of refuge, you yeah. know, where we can just relax. Yeah. and quote unquote, let our hair down. I mean, I know mm -hmm. I ain't really, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, and just be our authentic selves, man. Mm -hmm. Was that a part, was that intentional and by design for you or it's because you just recognize you had a skill in barbering or did you recognize how much value you were going to add to mm. the black community by starting, by opening up a barbershop? Yeah, it was just skill at first, but then, because I opened uh, my first shop when I was 24, you know? And when I was young, I wasn't going to the barbershop because I really couldn't afford it. Right. Usually I would just uh, do a one all, uh, all even and then go to the shop and pay like 
five or seven dollars for the line. And, you so know? You, 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 was, you, was, you was you was speaking, you was ahead of the game yeah. even when you was young. Yeah, yeah. So, but now that I'm older, I see what it does for uh, our black men, yeah. or just men in general. Men in general. Uh, right. We'll get guys that would come here, and it's kind of like a therapy uh, session mm. for most men, you know, because a guy will come here and he's having a hard hard day with his wife and you know they just telling yeah. us everything you know yeah. and it's dope that they're comfortable enough to even like just open up to a barber like that about their personal life you know yeah. and it's our job to you know educate them or you know sometimes I learn from them you know so it's, so I think I didn't do it intentionally but now that I see it's it's important because I'll have guys that would hit me up like after the haircut like man that conversation or that advice you gave me about my girl this and that you know right. at work you know so I think uh is it, yeah like I said it's a good therapy session for most men yeah it yeah. is man and I think that's special I, I don't want to that that point to get lost right mm -hmm. because especially the climate that we're in now yeah right where a lot of black males are feeling threatened by the, the racial unrest, yeah. right, and the political unrest that we're experiencing. We're in the midst of a pandemic that has yeah. been going on for years yeah. now, right? And that adds additional stress, stress. Yeah. And, and, and pressure yeah. and, and, and strain, mm -hmm. right, on top of the, the pressures <laughs> that are yeah. already yeah. in existence. Yeah. So I don't want to miss that. The value of what you just said, man, is that the, the therapy almost, and not pretending to be yeah, a licensed yeah. therapist yeah, or anything, nah. But it is tremendous value mm -hmm. that you're adding to, to the community. Yeah. Do you talk to the other barbers in the shop uh, to help them recognize and acknowledge them and even give them their flowers and recognizing that, wow, we're, we're adding a lot of value to the, the culture yeah. of the com in, our, in our community right now? Yeah, 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 I definitely uh, acknowledge. Uh, like one of the barbers, uh, his name is uh, C.T. I hired this guy just off one conversation because the knowledge he was giving me, right. I was like, I didn't even know if he could cut or not. So, oh, you wow. know, so, but just, I, I uh, hope, can, can, can he cut? yeah, yeah, okay, he can cut. Right. <laughs> so, but just uh, the first time we talked, I saw that he had a lot of knowledge and I wanted that to be a part of my establishment, you know, because yeah. I was learning stuff from him right then and then, you know, so, so just giving them their flowers like that. Um, or uh, my friend Ray, he's uh, he's been with me since we opened in 2015. Um, like he's always educated me on, like you know, just being a man first, cause you know he you know he got a daughter and right. really great father, you know. So just telling them how well they're doing, um, and we're all learning from each other here, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I get I give them their flowers. Besides, like the fact that they can all cut hair, you know, right, but right, and just they, being, they're good at what they do. Yeah, yeah, just but. being great uh, black men. Um, we sometimes forget because uh, sometimes we get into like, you know, we'll get lost and uh, clowning each other and this and that. But right. you don't know what that could do to someone like mentally after they get off work. But yeah. so here I kind of preach to the barbers that we're more of a family, you know, brother. Right. This is a brotherhood, so. We try to, you know, amp each other up and yeah. talk positive about each other because you never know what, like, one another is going through, you know? No, for sure, man. Yeah. And, man, thank you and all the barbers for being such a, a valuable resource for a time such as this when so many men, black men in particular, are going through so much stress yeah. and, 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 ang and angst. Right? Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure you all are having much more of an impact than y'all probably realize. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so from, from a community standpoint, do the the members of the community or the patrons, the, the people that come into the shop, yeah. do you think they recognize that that's what they are receiving when they come into the shop? Yeah, I think they do. Because um, mm. like, like I said, we've been open since 2015 and uh, Maybe like once a year we'll do like a free haircut for the community. Oh, that's dope. You know, we just did one recently here. So we, you know, we, we give back to them to show them that they're appreciated. And right. obviously like we wouldn't be here without them, you yeah. know? So 
yeah, they they, they know uh, we appreciate them and giving back and all that. No, nah, that's dope, man. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, one of the things that I've done, uh, you know, when I was living in North Carolina, in yeah. the Raleigh area, yeah, really at the height of a lot of the tensions in between law enforcement and the black community back in 2014 yeah. when Michael Brown was killed in Ferguson. Yeah. You know, knowing, I recognize what you're talking about right yeah. now is that, you know, as men, you know, we don't often talk. We yeah. hold our feelings and our emotions in, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times it's trauma, but it's untreated trauma and unresolved yeah. trauma and we're holding it in mm -hmm. but the barbershop man that's the one place yeah. where you feel a little more comfortable mm -hmm. and it serves as an outlet you yeah. man you talk about anything and everything in the yeah, barbershop yeah, yeah, right from sure. sports to mm -hmm. marital advice yeah. yo you know with your girl you yeah. know you talk about anything and everything yeah. in the barbershop and yeah. I realized that in the barbershop that I was attending a lot of guys were just venting and expressing their frustrations about mm -hmm. The, the climate uh, with law enforcement in particular. Yeah. And I recognize that, wow, like, if the police were actually here to hear yeah. some of these feelings and emotions, maybe that could develop some empathy. Yeah, and yeah. maybe even if we were to hear some of the perspectives of the police, mm -hmm. we could come together and mm -hmm. co-create some solutions on how to create a healthier and more inclusive yeah. environment and so started doing these these discussions in the the, the barbershop mm -hmm. and so I say all that to say man this is such a, a an incredible platform yeah. to provide healing and resolution and reconciliation because mm -hmm. those conversations that started in the barbershop mm -hmm. transformed and, and saved lives mm -hmm. in that community yeah. and so the just recognizing that that this platform of the business that you've started yeah. is it's beyond entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's beyond you being able to be a provider for you and your family, yeah. right? It is affecting social change throughout an entire community. And we're at the epicenter of social and political unrest here yeah. in the Minneapolis area. Yeah. And so I think the value that you're bringing has, is, is just multiplied yeah. on, on many levels. I yeah. mean, it's important and it's valuable in any community. Yeah. But because of what's been happening here, yeah. man, just recognize the yeah. value that you have, have, have provided. Yeah. It, it, it's so much be beyond your ability to provide for your family. And we, we appreciate your willingness to share that gift. Man, I appreciate those kind words, for real. Um, yeah, like, that's, I didn't even think of it like that, you know? Because yeah. I just started out cutting my friends at home at the locker room in my high school and to hear those words uh, come from uh, you saying that like we're changing the community and you know the platform I, I have here um I really appreciate that no no all love man yeah. all love yeah how did you um, get connected to the the Minnesota Timberwolves I mean maybe I'm Maybe if I can give them my barber's license, I can get floor seats somehow, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got you, man. Um, <laughs> I, I started cutting uh, Tyus Jones. I was cutting Trey Jones in high school while Tyus was at Duke. Ah, so okay. when uh, Tyus got drafted and came here, he was my first uh, Timberwolf. And uh, funny story, Ties was actually uh, keeping me a secret from all the other uh, players. Uh, so, man, come on, man. Yeah, you so, know how we do. Yeah. Guys would be like, yo, where you get those from? <laughs> nah, son. Nah, son. Yes. <laughs> so, so when Cat found me, he's like, man, I've been trying to get in touch with you. I didn't know you was cutting Tyus, you know? So Tyus was keep, uh, holding out on <laughs> who was cutting them, you know? So Tyus put me on with, uh, well, yeah, Tyus put me on with, Cat and you know, Cat put me on with the rest of the guys on the team, and I always tell people, you know, it's about uh, the relationship, you know, not yeah. the transaction. Because uh, when I first started cutting Cat, you know, I, I would never even ask for a dollar. I was just grateful for the opportunity wow. that you know he's given me to cut his hair. You know, he's an all star. So, but as time goes, we built a relationship. To, like obviously, he pays me, but Right. It's, he's given me way more opportunities that, m like, you know, money can't, you know. Yeah, not figure. So, like, just putting me on with, you know, other players, um, 
it's just th that's what I try to preach to uh, the barbers here. It's right. more about relationships and building that relationship with your clients. You know, um, they can bring you a, a long way. No, oh, that's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. Look, man, I appreciate the gems that you shared with me. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sure that they will be a blessing to so many other people, man. Thank yeah. you for what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, it does not go unrecognized. And if, if you could just share one final word, you know, to, to the young people who do look up to you. Yeah. Right. Not just that 13 year old that <laughs> wanted to get that pick. There's yeah. so many of uh, others like him out yeah. there, you know, as as an example, right, that you're setting mm -hmm. a source of inspiration and, and aspiration for maybe I could be like you. Yeah. You know, just share some one, one, one word of counsel or advice, man, for the young people that are looking up to you. Yeah, you know, I would say just follow your dream. You know, that's the generic or the cliche saying, but that's really real, you know. Um, so I would just say follow your dreams and like actually be serious with it. Um, like I had a conversation with one of the uh, barbers the other day and we be talking about, cause I want to open a barber school one day, you mm -hmm. know? And he, he jokes with me and he said he wants to be an instructor. But the, the other day, you know, he was running late uh, to come to work. And I was telling him, I'm like, it, you gotta practice, you gotta practice being on time now, you know? Cause mm -hmm. if that's like being an instructor, you can't, you can't be late. So I be, right. When I talk to them, I'm telling them as like a homeboy. I'm not like telling you just because you're working here. Right. It's because I want better for you in the future. So what I was doing when I was coming up before I opened my own shop, you know, I had to practice being on time. I had to practice right. answering the phone. I had to practice, you know, greeting the clients before, the, you know, when they walk in. So that's the knowledge I'm sharing with the guys. So I would say, you know, just be professional and, you know, take, your job serious because right. that, that's how I ended up being where I'm at now you know yeah. so yeah just take your job serious and you know keep following your dream no that's love man doing the little things consistently yeah. over time is yeah. what will lead you to greatness yeah, yeah. I appreciate it man, man thank you Akeem for having Mack me Way. much you, love <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate we, you man we gotta go course side one day man uh, <laughs> hey look man I'm, sign me up let's go <laughs> I got you. I'm actually going to cut Cat uh, after this interview, so I'm going to see what he can do for uh, Kamar again. See what he can do again. for me, man. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah. him true pedigree. All right. See what, can, <laughs> see what he can do for me. All right, I got you. All right. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having Much me. Much love. Yeah.